starting places. The seaport town of Manzanillo in Mexico, and this, a large luxury cruiser docking at Manzanillo, one of the last ports of call in a Mexican and Central American cruise. It should have been a leisurely, unhurried trip, but at least one passenger didn't feel that way. Come in. You feeling better this morning, Laura? Oh, come on. You're not the first gal to be seasick, honey. Seasick? I didn't know a nurse could be fooled that easily. I wasn't seasick, Alice. I was drunk, plain drunk. Does that shock you? Laura! Laura Matson was so drunk she couldn't sing. That's what a singer is hired for, isn't she? Even on board ship. But why, Laura? Why? Because I'm no good. Are the words plain enough? Because I finally took one good look in the mirror. And the answer was there. What am I, Alice? I has been at 35. A fifth rate singer who can't even get a job anymore, except on a tub like this. Do you know what it's like to be a big hit couple of years? And then take a nosedive that you never pull out of? Laura, please. I used to be somebody, Alice. Somebody who could pick up a phone and get a job in any nightclub in New York. Why, well, I could. Oh, what's the use? Once you start going downhill, you don't stop until you hit the bottom. And even then, you don't stop. Laura, you just feel blue today. Don't because... tell me why I feel blue. I've been feeling this way for six years. For six years, I've been living off handouts, drinking, missing shows like last night, kicking myself for being what I am. But it's not going to be like that anymore. Things are going to be different, you'll see. Because now I've got something to live for. Something to live for. The woman in this case was an entertainer aboard a cruise ship. The man owned a luggage in Zanillo, Mexico. But it wasn't enough for them. Evidently, it was not nearly enough. And now, in my role as Chief, Division of Investigations, United States Customs, I'm going to tell you about a case in which two people were determined to smuggle a large quantity of heroin into the United States. Two people who boldly pursued their own dreams without regard for the nightmares they might have brought to others had their plan succeeded. This is Treasury File 1138, United States Customs. The case of the leather bags. The Manzanillo police had for some time been observing Miguel Ramirez. Though actual proof had not yet been obtained, Ramirez was suspected of being connected with the passing of narcotics. Buenos dias, senorita. May I help you? Yes, you might show me some leather handbags. There's nothing wrong, is there? What could be wrong? I have missed you, Laura. The sight of you. The touch of you. When all this is over, I will never let you go. Can you meet me tonight, Miguel, for dinner? No, no. We cannot be seen together. But my ship stays in port for three days. Can't I see you before I leave? It's been so long since we've been together. If we don't... Ah, Senor Lindsay, don't forget your bag. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senor Lindsay, I am sorry I took so long to fix your wallet, but uh, it's all ready now. Fine. 
Well, this is a nice piece of luggage. Didn't know you handle American goods. Oh, just uh, two is left it to be fixed, senor. And my wallet? Oh, I see. Uh, excuse me? Ten pesos, wasn't it? Si, senor. Thank you, Miguel. It's a pleasure to serve you, senor. So this is the model he purchased, eh? Deluxe number seven, medium weight, large size, green finish. Well, it's not an unusual release in any way, but that may be the very reason he sent to the United States for it. An unusual release might attract too much attention in passage or on a pier. Lindsay, when the Matson woman was leaving Miguel's shop, you're pretty sure that she was carrying the identical type of release you saw in the shop? Well, it appeared identical to me, sir. Of course, I can't swear to it, but I'm reasonably certain that they were a pair. That's why I wired the manufacturer for specifications and had those pictures made up. And this ship that she's working on, it docks in Los Angeles a week from Friday? Yes, sir. It's one of those three-week cruises to Mexican and Central American ports. And it lays over in several places for two or three days. In fact, it won't be leaving Manzanillo until tonight. But you feel that this Matson woman is working in league with Miguel and that he's using her on this trip as a courier for a large amount of heroin? Well, sir, you know Miguel's record on narcotics as well as I do. That's why you sent me down there, to keep him under surveillance. And the way I figure it, he's after all the chips this time. For a year and a half, he's been getting hold of small amounts of heroin and saving them up for a big kill. Well, if he's trying to bring that stuff into this country through her, they're both going to be disillusioned. I'll send a picture of this valise and a description of the woman to our district office in Los Angeles. And if Miss Laura Matson tries to smuggle in any heroin, we'll be waiting for her on the pier. <laughs> What are you doing here? Soon your ship will be sailing. Why... Why did you bring the bag? I can't go through with it, Miguel. It wouldn't be right. Claudia, what are you saying? Don't you realize what this means to us? Uh, I need you. I cannot take all the heroin myself. I told you, you must take half and I must take half. I can't, Miguel. I can't make myself do it, even for us. Because you're afraid. Look, Chiquita, I would not ask you to do it if, if I knew that you would be caught. It isn't only that, Miguel. It's... It's me. It's us. It's... So many things. Look, Miguel, I thought this was a way out for me, a way to get back to what I used to be, but it's not. No, Chiquita, no. It is the way out for both of us. Don't you love me, Laura? Hmm? Don't you know that I do? Don't you know what it does to me every time you kiss my hand? This is my big chance to do something big. Well, why does it have to be heroin, Miguel? Why does it have to be anything like that for... Look, Chiquita. You must do this thing for me. You must give me my chance. Please. Go back to the ship. Take the bag. I promise you, I will never ask you to do anything like this again. Will you do it? Just this once. For me. For us. What can I say? How can I ever refuse you? Two days later, the SS Euronia had reached the end of her journey, the port of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Well, 
there's nothing unusual about the declaration. Is this the only one she brought with her? That's all, Lindsay. As soon as I spotted it, I called you. You've been over this, of course. Every inch of it. No hidden compartments, no trick pockets, no buildup on the bottom. You sure we've got the right woman? Well, there couldn't be two like her, McGraw. Where is she now? She's being searched by the matron. If you can find anything in that valise, Lindsay, you're a better man than I am. I've measured it and tapped it from top to bottom. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Let's take all these clothes out here and strip this down to the bone. In a big deal like this, Miguel might have thought of something a lot smarter than just a false compartment. What else could there be? I don't know, but when we get this baby up on a scale, we may be able to find out. Scale? Are we going to weigh it? To the ounce. Okay, check it out. Where does she run? 11 even. I thought so. According to factory specifications, this bag should weigh in at eight and a half. Somewhere in that bag, there's an extra two and a half pounds of heroin. And I think I have an idea where it might be. Where? Within the size of the valise itself. These sides have been rebuilt, McGraw, with a lighter leather than the original specifications. And it's just possible that within the layers of leather, there's a space wide enough to accommodate a shipment of narcotics with cellophane containers. The sides of the valise? But they're only three-eighths of an inch thick. But if just half that space is packed with heroin... Come on, McGraw, we're going to take this thing apart. any heroin in that bag. May I have a light, please? Why don't you answer me? I didn't know the bag had been rebuilt. I, I bought it second hand. I never dreamed the sides of it contained anything. It seemed to be the same as any other bag. Why do you torture me so? All oh, right, I did know. I had the police built specially to bring heroin into this country, but you're wrong. It's the only valise. I had no one working with me. I bought the heroin from a seaman on board ship. I planned it myself. Will you believe me now? I told you the truth about the police. It's the only one. I have no confederates. Please believe me. Look, I'm, I'm willing to pay the penalty for, for what I... Set it up. 
I have a man trailing her wherever she goes. But why? Why let her go at all? There's another valise, McGraw. Somewhere between here and Manzanillo. I got word that Miguel disappeared from there yesterday. She's going to help me find him. Laura Matson was under the constant surveillance of a treasury agent from the moment she made her supposed escape from the pier in Los Angeles. She proceeded directly to an address downtown in the Mexican section. Still under close watch, she was observed to engage a room in a boarding house, a house belonging to a woman who was known to have relatives in Manzanillo, but who had no police record whatsoever. For almost a week, Laura Matson did not once venture out of the house. And then on the 13th day, she did go out. She had a message to send at a local telegraph office. United States Treasury. I'd like a copy of that radiogram as soon as you send it. Miguel Ramirez aboard SS San Carlos. No use for utmost haste. Caretaker's reference to narrow size of escape valves unwarranted. But Los Angeles waiting arrival of consignment. I was hoping for something like this, Lindsay. She was clever enough to use code, but not a very good one. Intelligence cracked it in about an hour. What does it say? I'll show you how the code works. By dropping out a few of the words and letters, here's what the message becomes. Use utmost care. Narrow escape, Los Angeles. Waiting arrival. Waiting arrival? When? To San Carlos, docks next Tuesday. Where? Los Angeles, berth 65. All right, Chief, I'll be there. Look, senor, it is perfectly ridiculous to assume that I have any business to attend to in this country. I came here on a pleasure trip. And I'm surprised at you, Mr. Lindsay, for suspecting me of anything else. Even if you are a customs agent instead of what you pretended to be in Manzanillo. I've never expressed any suspicions, Mr. Ramirez. You had this man search my person. You had my cabin inspected from top to bottom. And now you are putting me through a cross-examination about my luggage. But you must admit that it's a little strange for a man to be traveling three days and then arrive in Los Angeles without any luggage at all. But I have luggage. You inspected it. Just two little handbags. Where's the rest of it, Mr. Ramirez? I told you. There was an unfortunate accident aboard ship. You can ask the captain. There was a fire in my stateroom and my luggage was destroyed. It's me, Miguel. Miguel. At long last. It's been so long. So much has happened. Oh. Miguel, the police are looking for me. The, the police? Yes, I escaped from them at the pier. I didn't dare tell you about it in the radiogram. Miguel, they... They have the police. They... They took it from you? They have the heroin? They have everything. Miguel, it couldn't be helped. They seem to know all about me. I didn't tell them about you. Two and a half pounds, Laura. All that money. All the time and effort it took to get it. Now it's... I water down a drain. But we can make up for it. How? Where? Is it so much less, Miguel? Only half of it is gone. We still have the other half. 
The other half is not with me. I couldn't bring the second valise. Well, what happened? They took it from you? You must have more faith in me, Laura. Your radiogram warned me to be careful. So I had it taken ashore by some friends in Mexico. <laughs> it will be here within a week. No, it's a waiting game, Lindsay, and we just can't afford to be impatient. But it's almost a week now, Chief. And if he disposed of that heroin before he landed in Los Angeles, well, we might be better off by moving in and questioning him. How far do you suppose that would get you with a man like Miguel? No, Lindsay, so long as they're both under 24-hour surveillance, we're better to wait until they make their first move. Then we'll find out if that valise was really destroyed in a fire. And in the meantime? In the meantime, I've alerted all customs officers on the Mexican and Canadian border to be on the lookout for it. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, yes, put him on, please. Hello, Sparks. Indeed? Well, that's fine. El Paso, eh? Uh, hold on just a moment, please. You can move in right now, Lindsay. A pickup on Ramirez and Laura Matson both. They stopped that Belize on the Mexican border with two and a half pounds of heroin. Right, Chief. Yes, Sparks. Miguel, you mustn't take any more. You can't go on like this. Something must have gone wrong. That valise should have been here by now. Or I would have heard. The valise doesn't worry me anymore. If you think we're in trouble, then we have to get away before we're caught. Laura, Laura, what kind of a stupid child are you? Without that valise, I couldn't run away. If that were lost too, what would be left of me? Please, darling, you've got to put us. Miss Matson. The express man is here waiting for Mr. Ramirez, Miss Matson. Wait. It might be a trap. Then you better hide. In here. Listen. There's a stair that leads to the roof. Now, if it's the police, I'll try to stop them. The express man is waiting, Miss Matson. Just a moment, I'm coming. Miss Matson? What do you want? I have a warrant for your arrest. You're wanted for narcotic smuggling. And Miguel Ramirez is too. Where is he? I haven't seen him in over a week. Haven't you? I told you I haven't seen him in over a week. Won't you believe me? Frankly, Miss Matson. He isn't here. I haven't seen Ms. him. Miss Matson, this is not going to do you any good. We know Ramirez is here. And we have the whole building surrounded. All Please, right, you I'll don't take believe me. You don't listen. Let me go. Let me. Miguel, he has a gun! It's no mystery why Miguel Ramirez took his own life. Rather than face the loss of his precious heroine or the punishment that was waiting for him, he left Laura Matson to her own fate, a prison term in the federal penitentiary at Alderson, where she is still serving time. What neither Miguel nor Laura seem to realize is the fact that five pounds of heroin, which might have brought them new life, would have meant untold suffering and misery to thousands upon thousands of prospective drug addicts. <laughs>